Palm Beach, Florida. Mansions face the shoreline. Pricey jewels fill the store windows. Bentleys dot the boulevards. But just down the road, the bling disappears as if a wave swept it away. If Palm Beach is high-end uh, top chef, Boynton Beach is meatloaf. A tropical blend of strip malls, side by side with palm trees, retirees, and young folks just starting out. It's home to petite, soft-spoken Dahlia DiPolito. She is Boynton Beach's most unlikely and notorious celebrity. I didn't do anything. The wrong kind. Miss DiPolito, is your husband Michael? Her road to infamy began with this video. It looks like police telling Dahlia her husband of just six months was murdered. Okay, I'm sorry to tell you, ma'am, he's been killed. <laughs> but watch closely, because nothing in this case is what it seems. Try to calm down. Turns out police are duping Dahlia. That whole crime scene, it's fake. Police claim Dahlia ordered a hit on her husband and that they have hidden camera video to prove it. Nobody's going to be able to point a finger at me. First comes love, then comes marriage, then murder. This story was on newscasts everywhere. Dahlia DiPolito, she is the Boynton Beach newlywed. Caught on tape, taking a contract out on her husband. The hitman turned out to be an undercover cop. Police staged a fake murder scene. For six years, hounded by the press, but never saying a word until now. Walking on the sidewalk right now, this doesn't happen very often. No, this, this doesn't happen at all. This is the first time I've had a walk in a, a long time. Yeah, your every move is monitored. She's under house arrest, accused of solicitation to commit murder, tethered to an ankle bracelet. That's what it looks like, and it doesn't come off at all. She says she's on medication for what is unsurprising, depression and anxiety, and that faith is what gets her through each day. Her favorite escape, listening to worship music. Her favorite band, Hillsong. Touch the sky. All those, the songs are just about uh, people going through struggles. I feel like I'm, you know, casting away the negativity and just really bringing in light. What's been the hardest part? Not knowing when it's over, um, not being able to leave, watching everybody around me being able to come and go as they want, and I can't, I can't do that. And I'm just trying to be happy for them as they're in, they're coming back and forth and stuff. <laughs> Her downfall began, she says, the day she met what she thought was her dream man. What was your initial impression of Mike DiPolito? Charming. He was a workout fanatic and self-employed marketer and more than a decade older. But no matter, they had instant chemistry. What drew you to him? He was really, really engaging and I felt a really strong connection. We seemed to hit it off really quick. What do you think Michael saw in you? My personality. I guess we were active sexually. You know, that seemed to be on point. Well, there was that. And of course, Mike had a Porsche, seemed to have plenty of money, and a nice new condo in this complex, Renaissance Commons. What better setup to start a new life? I would say I was naive in that. I just never imagined something out as crazy as what happened would happen. You know, you would never see that coming. Indeed, who would have imagined that the DiPolitos would be a duo on the tip of so many tongues? Dahlia DiPolito. A DiPolito. Dahlia DiPolito. When people hear the name Dahlia DiPolito, what do you think comes to mind? Everything negative. All the headlines, the person they're describing, it, it's definitely not me. When Dahlia sat down with us for her first television interview, she wanted to talk about a very different Dahlia. A girl with a normal upbringing who danced, played sports, I had a really great childhood, happy, had a lot of friends. She went to Catholic high school, then on to college, and soon after got a real estate license, a career choice as natural in South Florida as sunscreen at the beach for someone with a personality like she describes. I, I didn't have a hard time getting along with people. Shirley didn't have trouble getting along with Mike. The two lovebirds were so happy dating, it was only a small issue that he was, well, married to someone else. I was told that he was going through the divorce proceeding. Would you have had a problem had that not been the case if he just was a married guy who was looking for Absolutely. some fun on the side? Yes. Mike had a past, but he says so did Dahlia. Mike says Dahlia wasn't just selling real estate. She was selling herself as an escort. Well, I didn't meet her in church. 
that's obvious. Uh, needless to say, you know, I, I was married. I made a bad decision. I, I called an escort, and she came. Okay, so it may not have been exactly a fairy tale romance, but Mike says he fell for her regardless. And just a few months later, he got divorced, and they wasted no time. Five days later, they were married. Why rush into the marriage? Why say, okay, your divorce is final, let's run to the courthouse and get married? It clearly wasn't well thought out. But from all appearances, it was working out. By day, the newlyweds exchanging love notes. We weren't like the party type or anything like that, and so I liked the homey type of you know, environment. Their nights, Dahlia says, often spent snuggling at home watching reality TV. Shows like Cheaters and Real Housewives of New York. Hey, Calm no, down. no, no, it's not Are right. You gonna fight with me now? Did Mike love it? Did you love it? Did you love it together? He liked the fact that people would be on these shows and essentially get paid to do nothing. It's just watching them at home or on their couch. Back then, it was all innocent fun, she says. Two people just dreaming together of being on TV. They said, you know, if they, they could do it, if, if you're watching these people do it, there's no reason why, you know, we can't do it. We look better than those people, and why not? But Dahlia says there was a darker side to Mike, something he was hiding, something big. After months of being together, his probation officer showed up at our home, and I had no idea who it was. When he told me, he just completely downplayed everything. She says Mike failed to mention he was a convicted felon. Years ago, he'd been to prison for fraud after scamming investors out of tens of thousands of dollars. Probation until 2032. Right, and that was something else that I didn't know either. I wouldn't have dated him if I would have known. That's just silly. That's a lie. She's lying. Mike says he was trying to live a very clean life to be sure he didn't violate his parole, which is why he got worried a couple of months into the marriage when strange things start happening. Seven years, I guess, prior, I had no run-ins with the police. I meet Dahlia, and then within six months, I'm probably pulled over, had my house searched, and uh, grabbed at every other area in Palm Beach probably eight times. The cops say there's a reason they keep pulling him over. They are getting anonymous tips that he's dealing drugs. And I'm like, well, how's this happening? Strange things going on in his life and in Dahlia's too. Police say after just six months of marriage, she has other men in her life, men who are helping her with a secret plan to get Mike's money, his condo, and get him out of the way. One of those men is in the front seat of this car. In your life straight after this, seriously, don't ever do this you know? And they're not talking about the weather. Killing somebody, come on. I mean, that's, you know, nobody's gonna be able to point a finger at me. Next, the honeymoon is over. I was a little surprised. It wasn't like, you know, kill him nicely. It wasn't even like, do it nice, don't hurt him. Or... Dahlia's alleged scheming is about to become a video sensation. It's a lot tougher than what I love. I know you're like, oh, what a cute little girl, whatever. <laughs> but I'm not. I could just watch the video over and over. It just is one of those clips that never gets old.